praise. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah. Our soul makes us boast in the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Bible says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah. As long as we have breath in our lungs, let us praise Him. Let us praise Him. Let us praise Him for who He is, for what He's done, and for what He's going to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm just going to jump right into my message here on, on worship. So you may be seated if you can. <clears throat> and then we're going to go back into a time of worship at the end of this. Hallelujah. But the Bible says in John 4, verses 19 through 24, it said, <clears throat> this was when Jesus encountered the woman at the well. And he says, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. And he says, Our fathers worshipped on this mountain. And you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. And Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither, <clears throat> when, uh, when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you, um, what you do not know. We worship, but we know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews, because Jesus, of course, came through the line of the Jews. But it says the hour is coming, and now is when the true worshipers. Everyone say the true worshipers. That's what God wants us to be, is a true worshiper. Amen? A true, what does that mean? He says, The true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. So God wants our worship and everything about it to be by the Spirit, by the Holy Ghost, and in truth. In truth of who He is, in the truth of His Word, amen, and in, in, um, in, in all truth and honesty of, of, of who we are and what we are. Not coming to Him, you know, fake and, and, and false, but, but genuine worship from our heart, amen? So, it, it's interesting because, you know, in, in the modern day church, we see, we see a lot of different things um, and, and I've seen a lot of, and I've traveled, had the privilege of traveling around the, you know, the world, really, to many different churches. And you can tell churches that truly understand people that, you know, of course, a lot of it you see in the worship leaders and the worship teams and everything. And you can see, um, you know, <clears throat> what the people that are true worshipers, the people that really know what worship are, and then people who are just getting up to perform or just getting up to, um, you know, to put on a, a, a show or, or whatever they, they, they call it. Amen. But God wants the true worshipers to arrive. Amen. And <clears throat> worship, you know, in, in Matthew 5, uh, excuse me, Matthew 15, verses 8 and 9, Matthew 15, verses 8 and 9, is, Jesus said, These people draw near to me with their mouth or with their lips, and they honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. And it says, And in vain they worship me, because they were teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. So in other words, if, if, what, you're, if what you're teaching and what you're portraying is just um, man's idea, man's rituals, uh, man's tradition and everything, there's no, there's no true worship coming from that. There's no, it's not coming from, it wasn't coming from their hearts. They were saying, you know, they were, they were doing and it sounded like what they were doing, all the right things, but their hearts, the Bible says, but their hearts were far from him. So, but what does he say? Remember, in spirit and in truth. Amen? So, again, it all has to come from, from the heart. It's, a, it's basically unprofitable to offer a sacrifice of worship from a disobedient heart. And that's what they were doing. You know, they were, instead of doing what God really wanted, instead of operating through love and mercy and, and justice, they were, they, you know, the, the religious leaders of the day uh, in Jesus' time, they had, they had manipulated everything and they were trying to control everything for their own personal gain. So what is that? That they were arrogant. We know they were proud. They were arrogant. They wanted, they actually wanted the people to follow them to worship really them, which was, we know, of course, is totally 
was totally wrong. In, <clears throat> so so to, offer, to try and offer a sacrifice of worship from a proud or an arrogant heart, in 1 Samuel, you remember in 1 Samuel 15, verse 22, Samuel said, Has the Lord as great a delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord. And he says, Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken or to obey is better than the, fat, uh, than the fat of rams. So he wasn't saying God doesn't delight in, in, in their sacrifices. What he was saying was, if you remember in the case Samuel was talking to King Saul, right? Because God had given King Saul an order. He said, I want you to destroy all the Amalekites and the king and, and every living creature, Right? But Saul had a Saul wanted to do it his way, and and that's always the that was the problem with Saul is is he be it began to be more about Saul and more about him than it was about God. So he had his own agenda, he had his own plan, and he decided, you know what, I'm going to spare the king, you know, to to mock him and everything, and you know, so he can be disgraced. And he said, and I'm and then I'm going to keep all the best, you know, um, sheep and cattle and everything like that. And so you know, Samuel comes on the scene and he hears, you know the bleeding of sheep and the lowing of the, of the cattle and the oxen. And he says, you know, what, what is this I'm hearing? And he says, oh, they're to be offered as a sacrifice. And he says, they said, but that's not what God asked. God asked for you to destroy everything. But he wanted to do it his own way. And that's always the problem. That, that's again, <clears throat> so you can't, <clears throat> when we want to do things our own way, you can't come and worship God. And, and a lot of times it's like, okay, well, God, I want to do this. And, you know, or God, I, I, I want to show you I can do this when God's saying, well, that's, you know, good for you. But he's like, that's not what I'm looking for. That's not the, the humility of your heart that I'm looking for. Amen. Because remember, worship comes. It's all from our heart. It's a reflection of what's in our heart to, to God and, and to his throne. Amen. So worship is not a religious act of, of posture or a stance uh, or even a tone. It's not whether we lift our hands or we're not lifting our hands. We lift our hands, you know, as a sign of, of um, you know, the, the Bible says lifting up holy hands to God without wrath and without doubting, right? So we don't have to worry, you know, we can, we should lift our hands to worship God. We can, we can praise him with the dance. Uh, we, you know, we can praise him with, with the instruments and everything like that. You know, <clears throat> I wish we had, you know, our full band and everything like that already, and that's going to come. Amen? This, that day is coming. But we thank God for the fact that we can capture, isn't it amazing how even in this day and age we can capture um, other people's worship, amen, and worship along with it. Isn't that powerful? That God hasn't left us out, hallelujah. And it's great even, you know, what we're going to do here in just a little bit too, whether it's just our voice or whether it's one instrument or many instruments, worship comes from the heart, amen? But it's your heart crying out. If you remember in Psalm 42, verse 7, it says, deep calls unto deep. You know, those, those deep longings, those deep, um, you know, what, what moves you in your heart, it calls out to the depths of God's heart. Amen? And then God hears that and he answers. As you have to understand, it's not about a, worship is not about a sound. It's about, God actually hears the, the sound from your heart. And, and he, in the Bible, even talks about you know, <clears throat> over in Philippians chapter 4, that even when, even when we give, it comes up as a, when we give from a pure heart, and we give from a heart that longs to worship the Lord and, and express our appreciation to God, it comes up to Him as a sweet-smelling sacrifice. Amen? And so, God actually literally, you know, He hears our worship, and He feels our worship, but he can also actually, like, it's like he can smell our worship. And if it comes from a pure heart, what, right, when you smell something that's pure and that's very, um, you know, just has a beautiful smell, it's, it's lovely. But if something, right, goes, is rotten or it's stale, right, I mean, it's bad, right? It stinks. And it's like God doesn't, so that's why it's so important. So worship coming from, or, or that even if a rebellious person even worships, or a person that's just proud and arrogant, any, any worship that they offer, it actually stinks in the nostrils of God. It's, it's like, actually, it's like, ugh. You're like, no thank you, right? You ever been around somebody that was just so full of themselves, and it was just kind of like, uh, okay, man, <clears throat> I 
I think I've had enough of this, right? It's just like, I can't take any more of this. <laughs> you, just, you just don't even want to be around those kind of people, and, and neither does God want to be around that type of attitude. What about, <clears throat> let's look at a couple examples here in the Bible. What about the ten lepers that were healed? If we go to, um, I want to just go to Luke chapter 17 real quick. This is so amazing right here. Look at that. They talked about that in children's church this morning. Luke 17, verses 15 through 19. And it says, Of course, the ten lepers came to him. <clears throat> and of course, Jesus... Um, They said, you know, Master, take pity and have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said to them, Go at once and show yourselves to the priest. And it says, And as they went, they were cured and made clean. Amen? So why, why did he say, Go and show yourselves to the police? Because they were actually to go, because even as part of the, uh, in the law, they were, they were ordered to go and offer sacrifice um, for, you know, when, when they had been healed or when they had been cleansed or whatever. And so... In faith, think about that, in faith, Jesus was telling them to go and offer this sacrifice in faith. But when, were, were they made whole when Jesus said that? No, it says, as they went, they were made whole. So by the time, or excuse me, as they went, they were healed and they were cleansed. So by the time they got there, they were offering the sacrifice because they actually had been cleansed. But then it goes on to say, um, <clears throat> and then one of them, upon seeing that he was cured, turned back, recognizing and thanking and praising God with a loud voice. Isn't that awesome? He recognized, thanked, and praised God with a loud voice. And he fell prostrate at Jesus' feet, thanking him over and over. And it says, and he was a Samaritan. And then Jesus says, we're not all ten cleansed. Where are the other nine? So this one here, this one, and, and the fact that he wasn't even a Jew, he was a Samaritan. Isn't it amazing? So many different times in the Bible you find the, 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 the Samaritans or um, they were they're the ones that received healing in the Bible even many times over many of the Jews. Why? Because they came in faith, just came in simple faith believing. And you know, when we come to Jesus, even though many times you know, we're not going to feel like it, we just have to come in faith believing, you know, you know, God, it doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what I'm going through right now. I'm just going to worship you. I'm just going to praise you because I know you're good. Even though I can't see the outcome I'm wanting right now, I'm just going to praise you and I'm just going to thank you because I know you're awesome. Amen. And it says, was there no one found to, re uh, excuse me, was there no one found to return to and recognize and give thanks and praise to God except this alien? or this outsider. And he said to him, get up and go on your way. Your faith, your trust and confidence springing from your belief in God has restored you to health. And so he actually went away. In the King James it says, your, your faith has made you whole. So I believe, what does whole mean? Whole means nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing broken. So I believe that the nine that went away, they were cleansed. Their leprosy um, had stopped. But guess what? Most times, leprosy, you end up losing an ear, maybe a finger, a nose, some of the different extremity parts of your body because it literally rots away your flesh. So they were cleansed, but I believe that this one right here was made completely whole. In other words, he got his fingers back, he got his ear piece back, he got his nose back, whatever was missing from his lip or whatever. He was made whole. Isn't that powerful? Because he came back to worship. He came back to say thank you. You know, there's really, there's really nothing that we can give, nothing that we can do in exchange for what God has, um, has given to us. There's really no way we can ever say thank you enough for what God has given us, yet <laughs> we can do our best. And, and simply, all God's really looking for, the thing that God's really wanting, is our life. He's just wanting our total surrender, our total... God, I give you everything, every part of me, every way. And one of the ways we pour that out to him is, is through our worship. Amen. Powerful. So true worship doesn't spring forth just only in the good times. You know, that's why the Bible says we need to offer a sacrifice of praise, which is the fruit of our lips giving thanks. 
Because it is, many times, it is a sacrifice to praise God. We don't feel like it. The flesh definitely doesn't want to, doesn't want to take time to worship God. But I've always found, I learned a long time ago, you know, I don't go by my feelings. I don't go by how I feel because I know it's just, it's just a temporary feeling. It's just, you know, the enemy tries to get you down. He tries to get you discouraged or you might just, you know, be tired one day or whatever, <clears throat> you know. But the moment that you just begin to worship God, the moment you just begin to lift your hands and give him praise and give him thanks, I tell you what, just his strength just comes. His, his blessing just comes. I mean, his presence comes and just, mm, just invigorates you, just stirs you, just lifts you out of that. It just lifts you out of that pit. Amen. I mean, think about it. Did, did Jonah, this was so interesting, really. If you go real quick to Jonah chapter 2, you know, many times we don't, you don't really think about Jonah in a time of worship. But, you know, Jonah was, <laughs> Jonah was in a, he had gotten himself into a, a pretty, uh, pretty terrible predicament. And if I can find Jonah here myself. Let me go back here. The Minor Prophets. Where did he go? Where did he go? Where did he go? Oh, there it is. Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah. Right after Obadiah. Jonah chapter 2. And, you know, it's really a short story. It's only four chapters here. <clears throat> but, you know, we know the story. God told him to go to Nineveh. And he, what happened? He rebelled. He's like, I'm not going to Nineveh. He's like, they're going to, you know, that place is, is vile. It's totally wicked. They're going to kill me there, you know. <laughs> But God's like, hey, you know, I didn't, ask. it's like, you know, does God ask for all of our, <laughs> for all of our concerns and all of our, you know, uh, well, God, you know about this. God's like, oh, yes, thank you so much. I didn't realize that. Thank you for informing me, <laughs> you know, how wicked this place is. No, of course, God, why do you think, I mean, think about it. Why do you think God was sending Jonah there? Because out of all places, they needed it, right? They needed revival more than anybody. And it says in uh, chapter 2, verse 1, then Jonah prayed, so then, of course, you know, we know he's, he's on the ship, and, of course, the storm arises and everything, and, and then he's telling, then he has to, you know, they're like, what's going on here, you know, and they're like, basically, who's the, you know, who's the, the bad luck charm here, you know, not that I believe in luck, but, you know, that's what they're thinking, because <clears throat> these are a bunch of heathens he's on the, the ship with, basically, and, and um, <clears throat> then he says, you know, it's me, he says, you need to throw me over, and so, you know, at first, they're like, no, you know, we can't do that, and, um, and then, they actually, it says, therefore, they, in fact, in verse 1, uh, excuse me, chapter 1, verse 14, it says, Therefore they cried to the Lord, We beseech you, O Lord, we beseech you, let us not perish for this man's life, and, let us, and lay not upon us in, um, innocent blood, for you, O Lord, have done as it has pleased you. And so they took Jonah, and they cast him into the sea, and then the sea ceased from its raging. And then in verse 16, it says, then the men reverently and worshipfully feared the Lord exceedingly, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. So, isn't that powerful that God actually used that whole situation even to turn those men to turn and worship God? Because Jonah said, you know what, uh, I know this sounds crazy, and I know you don't really want to do this, but you've got you to gotta toss me over, because that's, that, that's what's going to happen. He said, if you don't get rid of me, this, you know, see, this storm is going to take us all out. <clears throat> and it would have. But as they, as they did what he said to do, boom, all of a sudden it's like, you know, the wind and the waves ceased. And all of a sudden they realized, wow, God is really at work here. And so they begin to worship and glorify God because, you know, God, God did what, you know, he said through, through the, pro still through this disobedient prophet. Isn't it amazing how God still uses us sometimes in our disobedience? Isn't that crazy? How God is just... Amazing. And so, so then, of course, now Jonah's, and you know, the Bible says that God had prepared this great fish, and it says that Jonah was, just like, you know, Jesus said in the, in the New Testament, that Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights, just like Jesus would be in the heart of the, in, in the, heart of the earth for three days and three nights. And it says in verse uh, 1 of chapter 2, Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the fish's belly, and he said, And I cried out, out of my distresses to the Lord, and he heard me out of the belly of Sheol, which is the place of the dead. And it says, and you heard my voice. So what a lot of people don't understand is Jonah actually died in the belly of the fish. He went just like Jesus. 
he, he went down, down, down. And if you, that's what the whole of chapter 2 is all about. But the Lord, as he, as he was dying, he cries out to the Lord. And the Lord hears his prayer, and God actually resurrects him. God resurrects him out of the belly of that fish. In verse 9 there of chapter 2, it says, But as for me, I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that which I have vowed. In other words, Jonah realized, I have to do what, what, I, know, what I had promised the Lord I would do, you know, all these years ago. Because Jonah had obviously committed his life to the Lord to be a, a prophet of God. And it says, salvation and deliverance belong to the Lord. And then the Lord spoke to the fish and had vomited him up um, onto the dry land. And then, of course, the word of the Lord came to him again and said, now go to Nineveh. But can you imagine, I mean, Jonah had to cry out to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm, I'm sorry, Lord, I humble myself. It's amazing, you know. <laughs> it's always better to just humble yourself, you know, in, in whatever we have to do, in, in not just in worship, but in, but in anything, lest we end up, you know, being swallowed up by, not, and I'm not saying, you know, God's going to send up some big fish along unless you're a seaman or something like that, but, you know, the chances of that happening to one of us are probably pretty remote unless you're out on a, a really big, out in the ocean or something, which is where Jonah was. <clears throat> but many times, you know, God allows us, God will allow us to get into some kind of a predicament that where we have to actually cry out to God and we have to say, you know, Lord, I'm sorry, uh, I was wrong. Lord, please you know, deliver me from this. And when we humble ourselves and then we begin to worship God, He will deliver us. Amen? He will set us free. I mean, think about the, Hebrew, three, uh, the three Hebrew children in the fire. I mean, they were, they were worshiping God every single day. And, of course, you know the story that, you know, they said, okay, anybody, you know, you must bow down and worship this, this idol. But they weren't going to bow down. They weren't going to worship some false god. You know, and, and constantly we see, you know, throughout society, you know, uh, godless people are, are constantly driving people to worship other things, worship vain idols, worship false gods in this nation. I mean, the thing is crazy a lot of times that people actually don't recognize it. They don't see it. Why? Because they're thinking it's supposed to be some statue. You know, well, I don't, I don't worship some statue. No, but people... <laughs> People worship all kinds of different things, and they don't even realize it. They give themselves to, and they, and they, and and they support their idols, and they, they, you know, they talk about they they talk about them all the time. They give more praise to their idols than they do to God, and then God has to come along, and tear those things down. Amen. And we've seen God do it with many different things through many different things. And so, of course, because they would not bow even though they ended up in that fiery furnace that was the safest place for them to be, it was right in the midst of the fire, right in the heat of the battle, because God protected them. God knew exactly what he was doing. Amen. And we could go on and on about, you know, Daniel in the lion's den and all this, and maybe we'll save that for another time. You know, we can, in fact, <clears throat> think about Paul and Silas, New Testament, Paul and Silas in prison. Here, here they're out there preaching the gospel, right? They're actually doing exactly what God told them to do this time, and now they end up in prison. And, you know, they've been beaten, whipped. Remember, they're sitting in the dungeon, cold, probably half naked, you know, and just dirty and everything. And, you know, that would have been the perfect time for them to, to grumble and gripe and complain and say, you know, Lord, what, what happened? You know, God, we're out here preaching the gospel for you, you know, and look at where it got us. But they knew the secret. They knew the secret. Worship, you have to remember, worship is such a powerful, powerful weapon. Because it changes, listen, it literally changes the atmosphere, not only of your life, but the atmosphere around you. I mean, think about it. Not only did it begin to lift Paul and Silas' spirits, but then what happened? They begin to worship, and of course all the prisoners could hear them singing, and they're like, what is going on? What are these guys singing about? <clears throat> and then before you know it, God starts tapping his foot, right? You know, he's like, hey, <clears throat> I'm enjoying that. <clears throat> I like, that, I like that, that tune. And as he's tapping his foot, there's an earthquake happening. And God shook that jail cell, and the chains fell off them. Which is another powerful thing about worship, is worship will, will set you completely free. 
it'll totally deliver you from whatever's been plaguing you. Amen. Because their chains fell off. Amen. And then they were able to walk right out of there. And not only that happened, but of course, the, the, the guard and his whole family got saved. So, we're, what, so what was that? That was, that, I mean, think about it. There's like three different things right there. <clears throat> that God used that to, uh, to cause salvation to come to this family's, this whole family. Because they saw something miraculous happen, and they were like, wow, who, wh- wh- what kind of a God do you serve? What is happening here? And, they, and he said, you know, I believe. And then salvation came to not only the jailer, but his whole household. Isn't that powerful? But what does that take? It takes a step of faith. It takes a step of obedience to say, you know what? I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what, what people are going to think about me. I'm going to worship God. I'm going to praise God in front of everybody. It doesn't matter where you are, in a public place. And, and that's why, you know, when we, when we come together, <clears throat> you know, in, corporate, in a corporate time of, of coming around the presence of God and the Word of God, man, if we can't worship here in, you know, in the, in the security, really, of, of other believers, how are you going to worship out there when, when the pressure comes? How are you going to worship out there when people are looking at you and wondering, okay, you know, what do you really believe? What do you really stand for? Because it's a test. There's a, there's a test that's going to come. Amen. But God is faithful. When we take a step, step of faith for God, God is going to meet us. He is going to meet us. He is definitely not going to leave us wanting. He is definitely not going to leave. The Bible says that, that we will, those who trust in the Lord will never, ever, ever be put to shame. Never be put to shame. God will honor us, right? Because when we humble ourselves, He exalts us. He lifts us up. Hallelujah. True worship comes from a heart that is pure and holy. <clears throat> the Bible says, you know, in, in the Psalms, and I don't have the Psalm here with me, but the Lord just quickened that to me. It says, you know, who can ascend to, to his holy hill? And it says, he that has clean hands and a pure heart. What does that mean? It means pure and holy, clean hands and a pure heart. Because when you try and come into the present, if, you know, if you're, if you're living in sin or, you know, you're battling some sin, you try and come into the presence of God, guess what? One or two things is going to happen. Either God's going God's to get you, amen, and he will set you free if you come humbly. Or most people, what they do is they end up running. They end up running for the presence of God, like Jonah did. But don't run. Don't run away from God. Run to God, even as I said this morning. God wants our hearts to be on fire for Him. He wants them to be full of, full of passion. I tell you, there's one thing I love to do is I love to worship God. I mean, I'm telling you, this morning, man, <coughs> that, that second to the last song really got me. It really got me good. I think it was actually the first time we'd done this song here. I, I play it all the time at home. I've been playing it, I've been playing it, and all of a sudden I said to my wife, I said, have we played this song yet? At, at church, and I think, and I realized, no, I don't think we have, because Caitlin actually just created it, and uh, and I realized, man, we got to do this song. I love this song, and I tell you what, power of God came on me so so. I mean, I had tears coming out of my eyes. I mean, I was, I couldn't even, I couldn't even sing. I was singing it, and then all of a sudden, I just, <laughs> oh, I mean, it came on me so strong. I couldn't even sing. I, I, I all I could do was just, I was just trying to contain the presence of God that was coming on me so powerfully. As I just felt the love of God, you know, for me and, and for everybody here. And I know God was touching people in a powerful, powerful way. It was just amazing. Who enjoyed that song this morning? Amen. I know you guys did. Hallelujah. We have to come to God when we worship in a heart full of faith. You know, that's why I love, that's why to me, <clears throat> the words, the words of a song are so, so powerful and are so important. Because if they're not faith-filled words, I, I ain't singing it. I mean, I'm just not even in I'm just not even going to be in it. Amen? Because everything we do, obviously, has to be of faith. Words that build us up. 
songs that are full of the word of God. You know, even many of the, the, the old hymns. Now, there, there are some old hymns that, again, I won't sing because they just, whoever wrote them didn't have a revelation of, of who God was. But there are many that are powerful. And thank God, you know, a lot of those, some of them have been, you know, resurrected and some people have put a new little twist to it, which I think is great. Um, but, you know, even to sing the old hymns just the way they were, the ones that are full of faith are so, I mean, just for example, you know, there's power in the blood. Oh, such a powerful, man, I tell you, it's such a powerful anointing on those songs because they're, they're filled with faith. They're filled with the word of God. Amen. But there is a difference between Old Testament worship and New Testament worship. And really, the main difference is, in the Old Testament, the Bible says, you know, that God inhabits the people of His praise, which was, which was so true. They would praise Him, and in the presence of God, they would begin to worship, and the presence of God would just come and just envelop the place. You know, the, 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 the glory of God, the cloud of God would just come and fill the temple. It would come and fill the tabernacle. And God would show up. But in the New Testament, we know that we become the temple of the living God. That we are the temple. And God inhabits the people of his praise. Amen. So it's, it's not, it, we, don't even, we, don't, you know, we don't have to wait to worship to realize that God is living in us. God is dwelling in us. No, we actually, we bring the praise. We become the instruments of God. Amen. And as we, as, we, as we sing, as we just lift up our voice, it's like the wind of God, the breath of God that he's put in, in our very being, that he's put in our lungs. We give God the praise. And if we don't, remember he said, listen, if we don't praise him, the very rocks and the trees will begin to cry out. This tree, it's still alive, in fact. It's still green. This tree will begin to cry out if we don't praise him. These plants. And you know, they actually, scientists have actually even found out that, that every bit of life <clears throat> makes a sound. Even though we can't hear it, it there, there are sound waves coming from it. And that's the way God intended it. That's why he actually said that, you know. The very rocks, the trees will cry out. God designed everything that he created to give him praise. The, the craziest thing, you know, the woodpecker tapping on the tree that, that might drive you crazy. God created that woodpecker to tap for him. God loves that tap. Yeah. It might be, it might be, anno- there might be sounds that are annoying to us, you know. The chicken that wakes you up, in, you know, the rooster that wakes you up in the morning. You know, it might be as annoying as I'll get out to you, but God loves that rooster. He created that rooster to crow, to, you know, to cockle doodle doo for him. <laughs> Think about it. It's powerful. The Bible says all creation rejoices. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Rejoice and give thanks in Ephesians. <clears throat> we're going to about to go into some worship here in just a moment. In Ephesians 5, 18 through 20, it tells us, if you remember, it says, Be not drunk with wine wherein is an excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our worship must never stop, and it will never stop, because that's what we're going to be doing when we get to heaven for all eternity. We're going to be worshiping him, worshiping him. And you say, wow, I mean, won't we ever run out of things to worship about? No, that's how, that's how big, that's how vast God is. We'll never run out of things to worship because we're going to constantly be, be how, how do I say this? We're going, to, we're going to be constantly coming to know him more and more and more and exploring him more and more and more because that's how big and how vast he is. That's how intricate he is. We'll see something, something new about him every time we, 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 we see him. It's powerful. Powerfully amazing. Powerfully amazing. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lily, are you ready back there? I'm just going to pray, and we're going we're gonna to go back into a time of worship here. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, right now. Lord, we thank you for your word, Father God, that has stirred us up, Lord, and encouraged us, Father God, in our worship. Lord, no matter what we're going through, Father God, Lord, no matter what we may be facing, Father, we're going to worship you, Lord. We're going to give you thanks. Lord, we, we want to go to a, another level in your presence, Lord Jesus, of worship. So, Father, we thank you for this opportunity right now. Holy Spirit, just come and invade our lives. Lord, break us free. Break us free, Lord Jesus, into your presence, into that realm of worship, Lord, where we, we reach out and we touch you, Lord Jesus, and you touch us. We love you, Lord. We love you. We love you. We praise you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's, let's worship. Let's worship.
His presence is everything that we need. His fullness. His fullness. Fullness of whatever we need. Fullness of joy. Fullness of peace. There's completeness. There's soundness. There's healing. There's deliverance. You can receive provision. Direction. He's so good. He's so good. He's so good. It's nothing like His presence. Nothing, nothing that can compare. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the first and the last, the beginning and the end. The Bible calls him the Lily of the Valley, the Rose of Sharon, the Bright and the Morning Star. His name is Jesus. Oh, we thank you for your sweet presence, Lord. We thank you for your sweet presence, Lord Jesus. Lord, let us never take it for granted. Lord, teach us to be even more and more sensitive to your Holy Spirit. Teach us, Lord, to know your ways. Teach us, Lord, to follow the rhythms of your grace. Teach us, Holy Spirit, to follow you. Use us, Lord. Use us, Lord, in your power. Use us, Lord, in those gifts. Oh, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you for that. We thank you, Lord, for those precious gifts. Lord, that you've bestowed that we can walk in them, that we can be blessed, that we can go and be a blessing. Lord, we thank you for the fruit, the fruit of your Holy Spirit that's being cultivated in our lives on a daily basis. Lord, as we yield to you, as we surrender to you, Lord, you are developing and cultivating and working out those precious fruit on the inside of us. We thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for that. We thank you for that. We thank you for that. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. The fruit of our lips giving thanks. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. <Lord. laughs> Oh, hallelujah. Oh. He wants us to be drunk in His presence. Drunk in His presence. Totally intoxicated with His Spirit. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.13, it says, If we be beside ourselves, mad as some say, it's unto God, it concerns Him. But if we're in our right mind, it's for your benefit. 
So when I'm in my right mind, it's for your benefit. If I'm beside myself, it's between me and God. Amen. Hallelujah. And you know, even in our, even in our offering, even as we offer to the Lord, Philippians 4, verse 17, he says, not that I seek, or this is Paul talking, he says, not that I seek or am eager for your gift, but I do seek and am eager for the fruit which increases to your credit, the harvest of blessing that is accumulating to your account. And then he says, but I have your full gift and more, and I have everything I need and am amply supplied now that I have received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent me. And this is so powerful right here. He says, they are a fragrant odor and aroma of an offering and sacrifice which God welcomes and in which he delights. And then he says, because of that, because they had given so liberally and so graciously, and they worshiped the Lord, they worshiped the Lord even with their gifts. They worshiped the Lord with their offerings. And he said, verse 19, and my God will liberally supply. Liberally supply. God does everything liberally. He, he generously, he extravagantly. He blesses and he blesses and he blesses and he blesses. He will liberally supply and fill to the full your every need according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. That's why I said everything you need is in his presence, is in his glory. Because he, that's where he supplies it from. It all comes from his presence. It comes from his kingdom. It comes from his throne. God orders it. God directs it. God sends it. All from his presence. And so when we, when we enter into his presence, he assures us. Everything's going to be taken care of. He assures us. Guess what? I want you to go and, and do this and do that. And, the provision, and, and you meet up with your provision in your place of obedience. Isn't that awesome? See, God connects us to blessing at the place of obedience. Isn't that wild? Just like what happened with the, the prophet of God in 1 Kings 17. God told him where to go. And his provision was there. God told him what to do, and his provision was there. God always meets you at the place of your obedience to him because it's, it takes faith to obey. It takes faith to obey. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. Just like it takes faith to worship, it takes faith to do anything that God asks us to do so powerful. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, We love you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. Lord speak to you. Let the Lord speak to you tonight. Just be obedient to do what God tells you to do. Just be obedient to what God tells you to do. Because He loves you. 
He loves you. Those of you who are watching, you just have to take that step of faith. Take that step of obedience. Even in your worship, just say, oh, I've never, maybe you've never lifted your hands. You just have to begin to lift your hands and just worship God. Just in your own words, just tell Him how much you love Him. And you'll feel His presence just wrap around you. That's what you've actually <clears throat> been feeling tonight as we've been worshiping. You've been feeling His presence, sensing His goodness and His love for you. It's unconditional love. It's unconditional love. That God just wants our heart. And when we worship Him with everything, we're showing Him that He has our heart. Hallelujah. Don't hold anything back. Don't hold anything back from God. Because when you release what he, asks you, what he asks you to release when you do what he tells you to do. God releases what's in, in, what's in his hand. He releases what he has for you. And he won't hold anything back. Hallelujah. 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 It's so free. It's so liberating. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's freedom in His presence. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is freedom. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Yes. Woo. Lord of God. I just feel another wave of His presence. Another wave of His presence. Another wave of His presence. making a way where there seems to be no way. He's making a way where there seems to be no way. He's furnishing a table in the wilderness. He's making a river in the desert. He specializes in impossible situations. He specializes in miracles. You know, actually, miracles are God's, God's everyday, ordinary way of doing things. To us, they're supernatural. But to God, a miracle is just His way. This is what He does. We need to expect miracles. Expect the supernatural. Hallelujah. Expect God to do big things in your life. Expect God to show up big in your life. Thank Him for the, for the small things. Be thankful for everything. But expect big things. Step out in faith. God's looking for us. He's looking for someone. He's looking for someone. 
himself strong on their behalf. God wants to show up in your life in a big, big way. He wants to just blow your mind with big things. Things that are beyond you so that he can work through you. So that he can show you how big and how awesome he is. That there's nothing too hard for him. Nothing too hard for him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Do big things. Lord, do big things on my behalf. I'm just going to say it for myself, personally. You, can, you need to say it for you, personally. Lord, do big things on my behalf. Lord, show yourself strong in my life. Lord, show up in a big, big way. Lord, even confound the proud and the lofty. Lord, that you may be glorified. Lord, that you may be honored. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. The Lord is so wonderful. He's so wonderful. He's so good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. God is so faithful. He's so faithful. He's so faithful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we'll give you an opportunity to, <clears throat> before we close out the night here, We'll give you an opportunity to sow seed. Again, if you're watching by way of the YouTube or <clears throat> however this is coming to you through television, you can go to, uh, you can sow a seed into the ministry, into what God is doing. If this broadcast has been blessing you, you can go to rivermsp.com, R-I-V-E-R-M-S-P.com, and um, click on the, the donate button at the top right corner. And um, <clears throat> secure online giving, you can give by way of a debit card or however you would choose to do that. Or if you want to send it in by mail, you can also do that. You can send it to um, <clears throat> the River at MSP Church, P.O. Box 561, Hutchinson, Minnesota, 55350. And we'll receive it there as well. Hallelujah. God is so good. <clears throat> good things are happening, getting ready to start up River, River Bible School of Minnesota in January. That's going to be awesome. We're going to be starting on Monday nights and Tuesday nights in January. And we're going to be th doing three classes a, a night. And uh, it's, going to be, it's going to be awesome. I'm so excited about it. Good things are going to be happening. More people are going to be getting saved, people are getting trained up, people are getting discipled. Amen? And uh, so if you'd like more information on that, you can contact us um, through our website or through our Facebook page, or uh, you can call uh, the number 320-547-1987. Uh, and you can also reach us that way. Amen? You can email us, Pastor David at rivermsp.com. Amen. Toys for Tots distribution coming up Saturday, December 14th. We'll be doing uh, some toy sorting <clears throat> just the, a few days before that, I believe on the Thursday night before, um, whatever day that is. I think it's the 12th, something like that. I want to say it's the, want to say it's the 12th, Thursday the 12th. We'll be doing some sorting um, in the evening. So if you can come and be a part of that. You're welcome. We'd love to have your help with that. And uh, it's going to be exciting, exciting stuff.
Don't forget, oh, also, this Friday, actually, this Friday is our uh, all-night prayer meeting. So, obviously, the last one for the year, being that it's December. <clears throat> so, man, some powerful things happened last time in our all-night prayer meeting. So come, even if you can only come for a few hours, whatever, whenever you can get here, come. It's going to start, um, so this Friday, December the 6th, from 5 p.m. to 5 a.m. And you might be like, what? How do you go for 12 hours? It's awesome, believe me. We start out with praise and worship, and, we ex- and then we're exhorted in the Word, and then we, we have a prayer topic each hour, and we pray along those lines for, that, for the rest of those 40, 45 minutes. And then the next hour, we do a couple songs, praise and worship, and, and then we're exhorted from the Word on the next prayer topic. And, um, <clears throat> and so you can come, you can walk and pray, you can sit and pray. There's plenty of space to walk around and pray. You can kneel and pray however you like to pray. But just come and, and press into God's presence. It's going to be awesome. Amen? And everyone is welcome. Hallelujah. <clears throat> We're going to be right here at the Days Inn in the, uh, in the old restaurant area there where we were before. <clears throat> so good, good, good things happening. Good things happen. Then don't forget House of Joy this Wednesday, 7 p.m. at our place. If you need location, directions for that, again, contact us. Uh, through our Facebook page, or you can email us, or, or again, call us out from the number on the website, and uh, we'll get you info. Love to have you. Hallelujah. God is good. Did I leave anything out? I don't think so. I think I got everything. I think I did. Hallelujah. The Lord is so faithful. God has been so good. How many needed to hear that tonight? That must have blessed you. Amen. Good. Good, good, good. Oh, and then the, that's what it was. The, uh, the other thing was <clears throat> our Christmas Eve service. We are planning right now to do a Christmas Eve service, um, Christmas Eve morning at 10 a.m. So, of course, Tuesday the 24th of December at 10 a.m. Uh, right here. So come, bring your families. We're going to have an awesome time uh, just for a couple hours, and then we'll let you go to have lunch with your families and spend the rest, spend Christmas, and that's going to be awesome. So, we'll probably do some Christmas carols, some different things like that. We'll, we'll work on that, figure out what we can do. It'll be fun. So, it'll be a fun time, though. It'll be a fun time, one way or another. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to pray right now for a minute for those who, who might be watching and before we say goodbye to our television audience out there. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you right now, Father God, for what you're doing in the lives of those watching. Lord, whatever they may need right now, Father God, touch them. Bless them, Lord. Heal their bodies right now in the name of Jesus. Right now, we take authority over every sickness, over every disease we curse it in Jesus' name, and we command it to go from your body in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Right now, those sinuses are being clear right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That, that ear infection right now is, is, is gone in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Pain right now in your, in your jaw area right now, healed in the name of Jesus healed in Jesus' name right now. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your healing touch. Bless them, Lord. Bless them, Lord. Bless every single person, Father, in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Come and see us soon. You're anywhere in the Hutchinson area. Look our address up there. Meet right here at the Days Inn on Highway 7 in Hutchinson. Come and join us. Come and be a part of what God's doing here. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.